No, but let's deal with your problem. <laughs> you but came if, to but see. But if you deal with my problem, I might not be able to do these things again, you see. I don't, oh. I, I'm wary of uh, analysis. Yes, sir, but let me point out to you, <laughs> yeah. knowing your history and knowing your family yes. and knowing your background, you have always, always resisted any notion that this creativity that you have comes from any sort of dysfunctional or you know, madness he, I, out of it's, family. I think I've often wondered if, if actually the, being an artist uh, of, in any way, any nature, is a, a, a kind of a sign of a certain kind of dysfunction, a social dysfunctionalism anyway. Mm -hmm. It's an extraordinary thing to want to do, to express yourself in such, in such rarefied terms. Uh, uh, I think there's a, a, I think it's a loony kind of thing to want to do. I think the, the saner and rational approach to life is to survive steadfastly and create a protective home and, 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 and create a warm, loving environment for one's family and, and get food for them. That's about it. That's actually all. Anything else is extra. All culture is extra. Culture is, uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess it's a freebie. It's something that we, we don't, we only need to eat. We don't need uh, particular color plates or particular height chairs or anything. I mean, anything will do, but we insist on making 1,000 different kinds of chairs and 15 different kinds of plates. It's, it's unnecessary, and it's a sign of the irrational part of man, I think. We should just be content with picking nuts. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcasts and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.